I am a veteran. I was married to a veteran who retired from the Army. I am the sister of two veterans, one no longer here. And I am the mother of the veteran who just spoke. My son enlisted in the United States Army when he was 17 years old, which meant that the Army had to get my permission as his parent for him to go off and to serve. When Dwayne enlisted in the Army, in my mind, all was well. Uh, he was returning to a community that he and his sister had grown up in. He was a what, we used to call a military brat, and so the military community was a home for him. And I was seeking to allow him to return to a very familiar community and to, um, to be at one uh, with himself. I was in seminary at the time working on my Masters of Divinity, and um, after I finished my Masters of Divinity, went on to work on my doctorate, and in 2003 with um, my son, I fought in Kuwait. I woke up and the war had started, shock and awe. I can't tell you the days and the minutes and the hours that I worried about my son's well-being. I can tell you that at the time of the war, the conflict, excuse me, in Iraq, I refuse to call it a war. The conflict in Iraq, at the time of the conflict in Iraq, I uh, was listening to members in the African American community in the days and months leading up to the war and their total disgust with the idea that America would go to war and the conversations in the African American community about racism and injustice for black people and the fact that black people ought not contribute to the war machine, uh, uh, to the military at any, at any, in any way, uh, and should not support President Bush's uh, search for weapons of mass destruction. But at the same time, that members in the African American community were um, challenging um, our political leader's decision to enter into Iraq, I was also thinking about my son and his well-being and where he might be and had received a letter from him saying, Mom, I'm in Kuwait and we may be going over into Iraq. So in March 2003, on the day of shock and awe, I was a nervous wreck. And I was a split personality because the African American community, if you remember, uh, many parents refused to allow their children to enter into the military. The United States military uh, um, experienced a drastic drop in the recruitment of African American persons during the time of the conflict in Iraq more than ever before because prior to that, we had had the ghetto draft, if you remember. And, but, the, but the conflict in Iraq was something uh, insidious, and black folk just weren't having it. That was my context, and at the same time, I was working on my doctorate thinking about theodicy and the justification of the goodness of God in the face of evil. And I thought to myself, this is a vicious circle. I can't write about the Odyssey. I need to write about an evil that's much more concrete. And I turned my attention to just warfare. And I did my research, and I watched, uh, I watched weapons being dropped, not in proportionality. I watched non-combatants uh, being uh, killed. I heard of uh, persons being tortured, everything against uh, what, what we call the just war theory. And it troubled my soul. And I always, I would look at TV and hope that I never saw a picture 
of my son's face. My television stayed on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never went off, and I always slept horribly thinking that the doorbell would ring. So imagine how I felt when the news reporter said, there are no weapons of mass destruction. <coughs> I wept and I thought of the scripture of Rachel in lamentations of Rachel weeping for her children and unable to be comforted. And I thought to myself, mothers all over the world are lamenting and mourning the senselessness of this, this, this politics was troublesome. My son returned and I think America wants the picture of a veteran who has it all together. And America wants their veterans to be heroes. And America doesn't want their veterans to have any kinds of problems. But many veterans are self-medicating, uh, they've taken, they're using drugs, they've been in, incarcerated, uh, all of these pictures that America doesn't want to have to deal with, I as a mother deal with. Uh, I deal with, all, I, you know, I, I deal with wonderful conversations with my son, his inability to get a job after a, 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 a good, well-meaning and a job that will pay his rent, and at the same time, people are thanking him for his military service. These are the things that we deal with. And I regret, I regret the day I ever signed a paper to allow my son to be a military person for the United States of America. I regret it, and I'm angry about it, and I just want my baby to come back. Mm -hmm. And I think there are many other parents who want their babies 